Today we're going to go over merging the existing EXO projects into a single project. This has been a fairly common question over on our Discord lately, and a video guide seems like it would be useful. The benefit in doing this is rather than having multiple project launch boxes with a subset of games in them, you may have one that has all the projects. Or you may have an existing launch box install already set up, and you want to bring the EXO projects into it. If we head over to the website here, retro-exo.com, you'll see we currently have ExoDOS, ExoWin3X, the RLP, and ExoScumVM. Now the RLP stands for the Retro Learning Project. This was released at the beginning of the pandemic as a way to provide some educational titles for parents who were stuck at home with children that didn't have much else to do at the time. It is not necessary to download the RLP if you already have ExoDOS and ExoWin3X. When you merge them together, you will be provided with a playlist that represents all of the games covered by the RLP. This video is going to cover how to merge ExoDOS, ExoWin3X, and ExoScumVM. Now, to keep this from being an hour-long video, let's say we've already downloaded all three of these projects. Here you can see, on my flash drive, I have ExoDOS, ExoScumVM, and ExoWin3X. The first step in a merge is setting them up. When you first download one of these projects, you'll only have the setup file, a few PDFs and a README, the EXO folder, and the content folder. After running setup, the rest of this will appear after it's extracted. You'll want to do this for all three projects before you begin the merge. For my example, I'm going to use the ExoDOS folder as the root parent folder. All the other projects are going to be merged into this one. We want to do it in the order that they were released, primarily because the plugin folder needs the plugin from the most recent project in order to work properly. If we merge an older project on top of the most recent project, then the recent project's plugin is not going to function. So in this case, we're going to take ExoWin3X first. After it has been installed, everything's extracted here, we're going to come in and grab the EXO folder, the images folder, manuals, music, plugins, and XML. We're going to go ahead and right click and cut these. You can copy if you like, however you're leaving 350 some odd gigs on the table by doing that. A common concern I have is how much space these projects take up. So I'm going to assume in this case we're just going to cut everything and move it over. We'll head over to Exodos folder, right click and paste. Anything that it wants to overwrite, you may let it overwrite. These are generally files like unzip.exe and common files between the projects. There's nothing that you lose in Exodos by doing this. Now we'll go back to the Win3x folder and go to the data folder. Under data, we want to grab the platforms, playlists, and parents. This time I'm going to copy. You can cut if you'd like. We're going to go to Exodos, go to the data folder, right click and paste. I do want to overwrite parents. At this point, we have merged Windows 3X into Exodos. If that's all you're doing, you can stop. If you're going to bring ScumVM as well, we're going to go over and basically do the exact same process. We'll highlight Exo, Images, Manuals, Music, Plugins, and XML. I will right click and cut. Back in Exodos, I will paste. It's going to ask me if I want to overwrite. I say yes. And then we're going to go back one more time to the data folder, grab platforms, playlists, and parents. Copy. And paste. At this point, the merge is complete. You can go to your root folder you merged to and run LaunchBox. If LaunchBox asks to update, go ahead and say yes. It may be necessary for some of the new features that we're using if your version is too old. The first time it launches, it may take a moment. It's caching a lot of data for the first time. Now, here we can see we have our platform categories. This is that parents.xml I talked about. We have computers, magazines, MS-DOS, and Win3X. And under computers, ScumVM is hanging out down there. 
If we go to our playlist folder, you can see all the various playlists we currently have. Our 3D FX games, our multiplayer games, installed games, and the RLP. I'll go ahead and briefly cover the installed games. This is the plugin that we copied over. For this plugin to work for all three projects, you must have used the most recent copy of it, which in this case would be the Scum VM copy. This is going to show us games that are installed and ready to play right now. So if we go back over to, let's say, composite games, let's pick the Battle of Antietam. I'll right click, I'll hit play. It asks, would we like to install it? I'll hit yes. All the settings look great, so I will not change them. I don't need a new graphics filter. And at that point, it will launch the game for me. I'll close this out. And if I go to my installed Exodus games, we can now see it's been added to the list along with Agent USA. If I right click it and go to configure, I can uninstall the game. And now it's off the list. One more thing to cover here. As you can see from this initial screen, we have two copies of three skulls of the Toltecs on the list. When I click on one, not only do we get a lot of music, but we can see up here that it's for the Scumbium platform. This one is for MS-DOS. The reason it's on here twice is because the MS-DOS version is going to be using DOSBox to emulate a DOS environment and play the game as native as it could. The ScumVM project is going to interpret the game using its own engine. It also isn't guaranteed to only be the DOS version. In many cases, the ScumVM version of a game could have multiple platforms underneath it. A very common question I get is whether or not the ScumVM project is needed if a person already has ExoDOS or ExoWin3X. Granted, there is overlap between the two. There are some games in ScumVM that were originally DOS games or Windows 3X games. However, there's also many games in ScumVM that were not on these platforms. And in cases like Three Skulls, there are games that were on the platform but may have been released for other platforms as well. For example, if I were to navigate to King's Quest and start the ScumVM version, you'll see that we have the option for two different DOS versions, the Apple II version, Amiga, Atari ST, Macintosh, and even the 2001 AGD remake. The Scumbium project tries to integrate every potential platform for a game that is currently supported by the Scumbium interpreter. So while you can play the DOS version in ExaDOS, if you want to be able to play the Apple, the Amiga versions, you'll want Scumbium for that. The other reason you may want Scumbium even for DOS games is it tends to reinterpret the games based on the way Scumbium works. So bugs have been squashed. Sometimes new features have been added. One that comes to mind is Leisure Suit Larry 6. The Windows 3X version has high-res graphics. There are better portraits for the characters when you're talking to them, and some of the backgrounds are much more detailed. Now, since you have XON 3X, you can play that version. Up until recently, though, playing a Windows 3X game on a modern computer was a real pain. So being able to launch a game like Leisure Suit Larry 6 or King's Quest 6 in ScumVM allowed you to see the high-res graphics without being a wizard at installing Windows 3X games. That about covers it for emerging the projects. The next video will talk a little bit more about how to use some of these great features that are hiding in LaunchBox and some of the features we have added to the games that are hidden as well. You're welcome to join us on our Discord, where we have extensive help documentation and all kinds of fun chat about these games. If you have suggestions for videos or project features in the future, you may post them there or reach out to me via email or even in the comments below. Thank you for your time today. And remember, never walk across the bridge more than three times or you'll never beat the game.